about wanting to make other people happy. So it's always other people, right? But when it comes down to Greg, where's Greg's happiness? Inside, no, I don't feel that he's happy. He doesn't want to let us know what he feels, what he really feels inside. He went to a religious school and those parents are very religious. I think part of what he's doing right now is rebelling. He felt himself as a loser. In my culture, we call that losing face. So who give his, this idea of a loser? You know, it's himself or his friends or family members. My gut feeling is um, Greg definitely has something other than money. It's something else. Maybe from his parents. We need to meet Greg's family, definitely. I've never seen you sweat that hard after one shift. <laughs> what fears do you have? I worry that his heart's going to go. Wow, first of all. I don't think they come to shows as far as I've heard. You've never seen him? You've never seen him perform? I did not see that coming. Comedian Greg Kettner is struggling to get a clear picture of his future. Unable to make the decision by himself, 50 strangers will tell him what to do. This might sound odd, but I'm getting used to this, having 50 people around. But the verdict's only three days away, and I'm starting to freak out. The audience have cornered his landlord and seen Greg through his part-time job, but they're conflicted. For perspective on his family dynamic, they're meeting Greg's brother, Todd. My upbringing was very strict, and my parents have always been more religious than my brother and I, but they've always been loving, supportive people. My brother's a great guy. Too bad I'm going to have to go out and kick his butt at hockey. This is the, uh, the audience. Hey, audience. Hello. My brother? I'm going to go out and warm up a bit. Todd and Greg seem to be very close as brothers. Watching Todd and Greg sort of horse around was, I think, an authentic snapshot of what they might have been like as kids growing up. Hockey's not exactly playing checkers. It's pretty physical. And as we saw on the ice today, that hit pretty good. Where's the massage? I noticed right away when he got back over to the boards where he was going to talk, his face was pretty red. He was pooped. He was really bad by that. I've never seen you sweat that hard after one shift. So who's the older? You know, you can't tell. I'm right here. I can hear you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to go get a coffee. All right. You want one? Yes, please. Okay. So Todd, what do you do for a living? I'm a psychologist. Really? Yeah. Huh. For sure. Are, are you married? Do you have a family? Yeah, wife and two kids. What do you think of him taking this, uh, this approach in life? When you're out late at night and you're partying and stuff, you can only do that for so long and it starts to take a toll long term, right? Todd, in terms of Greg's health, what fears do you have if he continues the path that he's on right now? I've thought about, you know, what if I got a call in the middle of the night and he'd had a heart attack? My dad, who's a marathoner and a vegetarian, had a heart attack three years ago. And so now we all have that genetic risk factor that's known, right? And, you know, he's a big guy. He doesn't exercise. And, you know, I, I worry that his heart's going to go. Greg is pursuing comedy at the expense of his health. Obviously, maybe he's a, a, a little overweight. <laughs> but, you know, family just worries about family naturally. Have you seen a show? Yeah. What do you think? The last one was really, really funny. How do your parents feel about what he's doing in comedy? I mean, you come from a Christian background, and this is complete opposite of, of the way you've been brought up. What do they think about it? My parents, they're supportive of Greg. I don't think they really like what he does, but uh, I'm not sure how much uh, they know of the details. I don't think they've come to shows, as far as I've heard. You've, you've never, never seen him? You've never seen him perform? Not that I know. Wow, first of all. We keep hearing how supportive his parents are, but they haven't even seen a show. What does your dad do for a living? My father's a family physician. And your mom? She's a nurse. So you have a GP, a nurse, a psychologist. What else do you have in your family? My little sister is a, a elementary school principal. It must be hard to, to come from a family like that because, you know, if everyone's achieving academically then you, and you're like the odd one out, well, then you probably always feel like you're never really making it. Do you think that Greg feels part of the family? Does he feel like he's worthy to be a member? I think he's struggled with that a lot over the years. I really do. 
I, I wish he'd feel as worthy as we feel he is, but I, I think he doesn't on some level. To be an artist amongst academics is a very difficult thing, and you can't ever escape that. It is what it is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Do you think he's happy doing what he does? I think he thinks he's happier than he is. You know, when he's on stage, he loves it. But genuinely happy, moderately so at best, I think. What do you want him to do then? I mean, do you want him to quit being a comedian? Sure, I think that'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> what a completely different perspective coming from Todd versus the friends. It was like there was no um, in between. You know what I'd love for Greg is for him to have a steady job that he really enjoys, either use his comedy or his public speaking skills at work, and I'd love for him to settle down with somebody, you know? Uh, he's really good with kids and always has been. In his heart, I think he'd love to have kids someday. Yeah, everything that Todd said backed up exactly what I was thinking, feeling. That first day that I saw it, I thought, oh yeah, go for what you love, go for what your passion is, but now I've changed my mind. I'm flip-flopping on what I initially felt. I really want to know what kind of woman he's looking for and um, what kind of relationship he's looking for. I think that's really going to help us give us the answer. Do you think that he feels he's worthy of being in love? We have yet to see the real Greg. I mean, if he doesn't open up, how are we supposed to help him? With only two days left, the audience must come to an agreement and solve Greg Kettner's dilemma. This is driving me crazy. I have no idea what these people are gonna say. Greg's brother would like to see him leave comedy and settle down. But settling down is easier said than done. Doing what I do, it, it, it's great for a single guy, a guy who never wants to get married or, or fall in love and have kids. It's gonna be a special girl who gets me and gets what I do. So I think it's going to take longer than most people. I mean, I can't just, hey, everybody, I'm a clown. Marry me. To learn more about Greg's romantic life, the audience has asked to meet his good friend, Christina. Have you guys ever dated? No. Nope. Just friends. I was in a long-term relationship, actually, when we first met. What about now? I'm seeing someone. Oh. Greg? Yes? Who's buying dinner tonight? I am. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Unless it's a hot dog, Greg is not buying dinner for anybody anytime soon. Greg, I hope you don't mind, but we really would like to speak to Christina alone. Enjoy my friends. I will. Thank you. <laughs> so do you think that the job that he has as a comedian is impairing him from meeting women? Definitely. I know he's really keen on settling down and finding someone. What makes things difficult for him is just him being on the road. You know, we've also talked about, you know, him meeting women on the road. And I've mentioned to him as well, you know, like, what kind of quality of woman are you going to meet, you know, at 2 a.m. or whatever in a comedy club on a Thursday night, right? Like, I mean, it's just, it's not going to be somebody that you're going to want to take home to mom and, you know, pop out kids with. How, how do you see him finding happiness if he quits comedy? I think he'd still have to definitely do it on the side. I would like to see him not do comedy full time. I think that would give him a little bit more stability finance-wise so that he could, you know, have the opportunities to, to meet women. After talking to Kobe, his brother Todd and Christina, the three of them gave total different answer. Well, Greg is definitely confused. Yeah, I'm even confused. He seems to crack the joke really easily, hide behind his humor. We have yet to see the real Greg. And so when he's dating somebody, does he take off that funny mask and actually let people see who he is deep down? I don't know if he does it when he's dating, but as a friend, yes. I mean, we've had definite serious conversations, and he is extremely warm and caring. He would give the shirt off his back to anybody. Greg has expressed that comedy has been, like, is the first love of his life. Has he ever been in love before? No. No. He's mentioned to me that he's never been in love. Do you think that he feels he's worthy of being in love? I, I, I think, you know what, I think deep down maybe he doesn't. It's really heartbreaking. 
When I heard that Greg had never found love, that was quite upsetting and uh, very emotional for me because you want that for everybody. I can't believe that, that Greg hasn't experienced love in his life. I think everyone has experienced love. I mean, I, I, I fell in love with my kindergarten teacher. Love is one of those things, it's like you have to really know yourself first before you can really love someone else in that way. He doesn't know how to open it up, up to it yet, you know? Learning everything that I have about him, I'm really growing a little bit closer and it makes the dilemma that much more important. He has a massively huge heart. I've got a teaching background and I know exactly which little five-year-old Greg would have been in my class. He would have had hordes of friends on the playground. He would have always been kind and gentle. And I, am, I think that any woman who does finally get to know Greg beyond the, the jokes and the laughter is going to really find a gem. The audience meets without Greg to talk through the latest revelations. You know, when she said, what kind of class a girl is he going to meet at 2 o'clock in the morning at a comedy club? I think that's the perfect class of girl that he's going to meet. You know, somebody who's going to who's going to be in that lifestyle, right? But it seems like it's really important the kind of girl that he meets is the the one that mom is going to embrace. You know, the 2 a.m. chick is not going to cut it with the uh, with the family, right? Just because a girl is out at 2 a.m. at comedy or a bar mean, doesn't mean, what is it? What are we supposed to be doing, sitting at home at 10 o'clock right. reading books? Yeah. Amy, that hasn't been out at 2, leave now. You can't, you can't judge people on anything like that. That means they have a social you're, life. You're and missing the point. The people that are... No, she's the right. The people that are saying, are judging those people are the people that are bored at home wishing they were out, but they're probably married. Oh, I, I agree with you. I'm about to explode. It's hard to come to consensus with a whole group of people because everyone's got a different experience. He's got really low self-esteem, yeah. and I think it, believe, it, it stems from his upbringing, for sure. Middle child, both of his brothers and sisters, everyone's successful, and he's oh, not. I don't think it's a self-esteem issue. I think it's a self-worth issue, okay. and I have very different things. Yeah. I feel he's, there's a bit of unworthiness there because he's trying to prove something, and I don't know who to yet. It could be to himself, it could be to his father, his mother. We don't know enough information. His parents can't come to a show because there's alcohol, there's swearing, there's, I mean... I don't know if he cares, though. Yeah. Does, but I would. I mean, eventually it has to eat at you. Is he truly happy if he never makes it in comedy, though? He constantly oh, refers comedy. to being broke. To you know what? There's something you guys don't understand about the comedy business. It's like any other business. You start at the bottom, and you're going to work your way to the top. It's not the good comics that make it. It's the ones that don't give up. You know, think about where Greg's at. He's told us right from the very first day what he loves to do. In my opinion, he's wasting time on a personal and a professional level. He's not rich, but he's got a roof over his head. He's got a car. Why not keep going? Well, I definitely need to ask him uh, more questions, yeah. Time for some tough love. I mean, if he doesn't open up, how are we supposed to help him? But how does that make you feel? I don't know. Well, Greg, that's not an answer. I don't know yeah. isn't an answer. Mm -hmm. I mean, ask it again. <laughs> I mean, you just, you just went right around that. That is shocking. Time is running out for the audience. They have one last day to help Greg Kettner with his dilemma. And it happens to be Greg's birthday. Is this where I thought I'd be at this age? Single, I'm living in the basement. I don't know what to do with my career. Probably not. The audience arrives with hard hitting questions. And cake? So we're walking up to his house with the cake in hand and thinking he's, he's uh, 41, you know, it's a, he's in an odd situation. He's got 50 people at his door. And the comedy. Yay! All right, here we go. We haven't really got much out of Greg. Um, I think he's a pretty closed book. I don't know if he's being honest with himself. So if he can't be honest with himself, can he be transparent or honest with the audience? We're not getting to the heart of the matter here. I feel really frustrated by this process. 
So we want you to take a deep breath, because we care about you a lot right now. Okay. And you got to be Thank honest you. with us. No punchlines. Yep. Just Greg. Have you been in a rut? Yep. How long? Probably two years. You worried you're not going to get out of it? Yeah, at times. Well, what kind of rut? What do you mean? You're, uh... Same old thing every day, and same jokes, and you know. Yesterday, Christina told us that you told her that you've never experienced love before. But how does that make you feel, knowing that we know that? I don't know. It's tough. I, I don't know. Well, Greg, that's not an answer. I don't know yeah. isn't an answer. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. ask it again. <laughs> <laughs> you just, you just went Actually, right around that. I've been scared to probably let somebody in. His body language closed up, and it was obvious that he was not comfortable with, with the questions. Your brother's biggest fear is that you're going to die. Wow. He relates comedy to late nights, uh, being overweight, not exercising, sleeping yep. all day, and he's afraid of losing so, you. And he did mention that you're partying and staying out late at night and drinking. In all honesty, it, I was doing that, but it's, it's yeah. changed. We know that your family loves you unconditionally, but do you think that maybe they feel ashamed by your career choice? Um, I don't, I don't think they're ashamed. So why don't your parents come and see your show then, Greg? Because <laughs> I politely asked them not to. That is shocking. Greg's the one stopping his parents from coming to his show. I did not see that coming. Just because, I mean, the way we grew up, and I know how my parents are, I mean, just even them being in a bar environment would be weird. I was starting to get really anxious and emotional inside. I really felt like we weren't getting right where we needed to, and we didn't have a lot of time, but I knew we were on the verge. And as soon as I spoke up, I just, everything poured out. It seems to me that there is something deeper rooted going on, because I'm feeling you need more reassurance in your life. From my family, or? From okay. a lot. So I would really like to know, with your parents, yep. I think it's time for you to be raw. Can you be raw with them, and can you at least invite them? Whether they like the jokes or not, they're going to see that their son is happy. Yeah. They're finally going to see the man that you've become at 41 years old. Yeah. Now, that is the most special thing. My parents are the greatest people in the world. But, but I think you're right in that no matter what I do, 